Hello, all of you listening. I'm Sneha Gupta, and I'm up on your screen today to share with you all my experiences of being a medical student in hospitals in and around London and working in wards during these trying months and things about life that I've you know, kind of learned along this way. It's not many years back that I used to be in the same very seat as you, thinking about what lies ahead for me outside of school. But I'll be honest, my mind was mostly preoccupied with thoughts of college app and essays and psychometric tests. So as means of a quick introduction, after completing IGCSE and IB and GIs, I went on to graduate from NUS Law School and I'm now currently in my final year of medicine at King's College London. So theme for this um, TEDx talk, Fabric of Being, it's something that I think a lot of us have probably pondered over in the last two years, mainly because of how drastically and dramatically life changed for so many of us within weeks. Um, in February 2020, I remember discussing with my flatmate, a flatmate in our London apartment how coronavirus was spreading in Asia. And at that point in time, it all seemed so very distant. There were no cases of COVID in London by then. But soon after, we started hearing news of it spread to Italy. And the next moment, we know the rest of our academic term had shifted online. And we had practical exams coming up, so those got cancelled. Now, when I look back and think about that afternoon conversation, I realized that one of the biggest follies, you know, um, one of the biggest mistakes that we as humans commit uh, is that we feel like we're invincible. And in our youth, especially, we start to believe that time is always going to be in our side, on our side, that we have a limitless supply of it. And in all of this, I feel like we kind of really don't appreciate the value of all the things that we currently are doing or that we currently have access to. And um, this, you know, this idea kind of became very clear to me during patient consultations, because it's at these moments of time when I'm sitting opposite a patient, that there's so much unadulterated honesty and transparency in these conversations, that realities of life really, really hit you. Um, you know, I've had the privilege of talking to patients at their most vulnerable, scared and anxious moments. And I've witnessed firsthand um, the strength of the human spirit to go through the toughest of circumstances and deal with them with so much of grace and um, patience and resilience. I once saw a patient, she had, um, that very day being diagnosed with lung cancer she was in tremendous pain almost unable to speak yet you know she spoke to me explained everything that had happened to her so far and at the end of this entire you know patient history taking session she actually even wished me luck for my training and the rest of my journey ahead and i can really never forget that moment because i feel this is what truly speaks volumes about a person you know to be able to look beyond themselves even in moments of pain or sadness or grief I know when we are in school or even, you know, sometimes after school, we kind of get so caught up in a sort of cycle of who we want to be, uh, you know, this um, image that we have created for ourselves, that most of the time we kind of end up doing things sort of mindlessly to achieve that particular goal of ours, that end game. And we keep doing these things without much thought, you know, doing them almost in kind of a checklist sort of way. I need to do this, this, this to get to a certain place. It could be X university or it could be, you know, landing an internship with Y company. And a lot of our efforts then start kind of getting strictly streamlined to meet those goals and fulfill those prerequisites. Um, and along my journey in medical school and even law school, I have been so fortunate to meet so many inspiring people who have not just enthused me with the work that they do, but I feel more importantly with their spirit um, towards life, I would say, you know, their passion towards life. And what I've come to appreciate by observing, you know, these people around me, be it the junior doctors who stay way beyond their, you know, uh, work time, or teachers and professors who dedicate so much of their time in mentoring students, is that they truly love what they're doing. And therefore, they immerse themselves fully in the journey because they're not doing these things simply, you know, sitting calculating what their return on the investment of their time is going to be. And the best part about this kind of involvement is that when you are fixated not on the outcome, like that's not the that's not the priority, then you're doing what you're doing because you genuinely enjoy doing it. And oftentimes luck ends up playing its part and we end up producing our best work when we're fully immersed and you know, value what we are doing. Um, I feel these past few months of protecting ourselves and our loved ones from the repercussions of Corona, it's taken a toll on everyone. You know, we've stepped on this steep learning curve, lockdowns and quarantines. It's made some of us, obviously ones with necessary privilege to delve inwards and recognize people and passions that actually genuinely matter to us. You know, for one of my placements uh, in women's health, 
I was in Worthing, which is a seaside town two hours away from London. And I don't think I would have ever appreciated um, living away from London and the sheer abandon of not having to wear that surgical mask, you know, uh, looped around my ears. Uh, being in hospital, getting to continue my education at a time when the future of so many things was giant question mark. These are things that I'm grateful for every day. You know, we've all had so many restrictions placed on us, whether it's simple things like shaking hands, hugging our friends, a hand placed on the shoulder. These had all become signs of recklessness. Um, a nurse, she was trying to lessen her patient's um, fear of a stillbirth. She told me how sad she felt at not being able to provide comfort in the way of rubbing her, um, you know, the pregnant lady's back. My women's health block was actually, it was in the midst of one of the worst waves um, that we had had in London. And one usually associates pregnancy with a time of, you know, so much joy for the family when everyone gets together. But COVID-19 restrictions meant that women were in maternity wards without even their husbands allowed to come visit them. And at that time, it was the healthcare staff and it was medical students who stepped up and made sure that their patients did not feel alone. During our medical training, this idea of being able to help, despite not being fully trained, it's been drilled into us. So even simple gestures like listening to patients, these have been proven to improve the mental health of patients. So even as students, we feel that we are in a, you know, we are in a position of capacity to contribute. And that to me captures the fabric of being aptly, which is being able to spread joy and happiness, comfort, being able to touch people's lives with kindness and never forgetting that that is the essence of, you know, being human. That is to be able to reach out to one another. Um, at this point, I'd actually like you all to reflect a little bit on your own experiences and, you know, one um, and think about you know have you been at the receiving end of someone else's kindness be it you know someone complimenting you on a day that's not particularly going too well for you and how did that make you feel you know i've really seen people step up to fulfill their responsibilities more so during covid you know be it junior doctors in the nhs who stay back way after um, they're meant to tired and busy consultants and nurses who take out time from their primary responsibilities to teach students and even my peers who are frontline workers and contributing to one of the most successful vaccination rollouts in the world. Um, another small anecdote, it was a particularly busy day in hospital and you know I went to attend my class on anesthetics. I was amazed by the consultant who'd come to teach and his spirit to teach. You know, he had to rush back into theater after a session, but while he was there, he was fully committed to teaching us. He broke down those concepts beautifully. He stayed for longer to address our individual questions and I was truly inspired by him. I was, you know, it made me wonder that individuals have to juggle so many roles and responsibilities. And this kind of ties in with this concept of duty of care that I was introduced to in law school, but at 17, I didn't really grasp it. But now I feel like I've come to understand how this simple worded duty pervades all of life. You know, recently in a seminar, the fire safety counselor explained to us how every person plays such an integral role in a chain of events. You know, if the cleaner in the morning did not come or did not get in time uh, to the seminar room before asked to clean the tables and chairs, then our health and safety would be directly affected. And then that would affect, you know, our patient's health and so, so on and so forth. So one has to work with others. And so many invisible and visible hands have worked for you to be where you are and for me to be where I am sitting now. And that is the fabric of being. So when I sit in on GP consultations, I notice how majority of the cases are related to increased levels of, of anxiety and you know depressive mood, especially among people who are younger to me or even my age. And I saw a lady who was being prepped to go in for a mastectomy and another who had growing fears of a resurgence of breast cancer. And all these incidents of you know seeing people go through so much in their lives really in, reinforced an acute appreciation of the importance of empathy. You know, to always remember that things on the inside are really, really not how they appear to us on the outside. So what we see on our Insta feeds or what we see on YouTube blogs or on someone's LinkedIn, it's not, it's really not all of their reality. What we see is only what they've curated for us to see or what they project on social media. So, you know, please don't let social media and this race of constant validation and, and even instant gratification and constant comparison with other people divert you from your own principles and your values. You know, personally speaking, seeing so many people struggle with their mental health, especially during COVID, it was so eye-opening for me. I haven't felt more aware of this need 
to be kind to people that we encounter, to be kind to ourselves and to be more forgiving. You know, people are fighting so many different battles that we don't even know about. And it takes so little to just be kind to one another, to be nice. You know, so much of what we face in life is is quite uncertain. And I have seen this factor of coming to terms with uncertainty play such such an important role in patients' lives, you know, especially their recovery trajectory. We can choose to be more you know, one of two types of people. First, those who get bogged down, they get disheartened by what's happening to them. And the other, those who take each day as it comes and make, you know, they make the active choice of not letting their circumstances dictate how they, how they feel. A question that I have often found myself pondering over is what keeps people motivated to do what they're doing? And don't get me wrong, I mean like doing what they're doing with so much integrity and passion and joy. You know, is it being fully immersed in the process? Is it, you know, empathy, sense of duty, you know, joy from doing that actual thing itself? Um, so one of my most favorite philosophers, Marcus Aurelius, he's a famous Roman emperor. He's a Stoic philosopher. And I would really recommend for you all to check out some of his books. He stated that our nature is to live a life of service, to help others and contribute to the world. Any resistance to this inherent purpose is therefore it a negation of our nature and a failure of self-love. And I feel these words have truly stayed with me, um, which is why fabric of me, fabric of being, sorry, to me means being present. It means being, being present in that moment and being mindful, being grateful for what we have been lucky enough to receive and then playing our part, recognizing that responsibility, that duty that we have in then passing it forward and um, yeah, I hope you all enjoyed that. Thank you so much.